Hello. Uh, I have a nice little problem here, a mathematical problem, that uh, might give uh, uh, students a little uh, insight into what calculus does. Um, sixth grade, seventh grade. Uh, it involves the uh, volume of a cylinder. So suppose you created a wonderful new recipe for jelly and wanted to sell it to the public. Suppose you were going to put it in tin cylinders and that the sum of the radius plus the height had to be 12 inches. So R plus H has to be 12 for some reason. Let's just imagine that. What radius and height would give you the largest volume? So the sum of the radius plus the height has to be 12 centimeters. And we want to know what radius and height will give you the largest volume. So let's uh, take a look here. So we have our cylinder. And you know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of the base times the height. Pi r squared is the area of the base times h. And we're going to substitute for h 12 minus r. So we have everything in terms of r. <clears throat> So we have pi r squared times 12 minus r, or pi r, 12 pi r squared minus pi r cubed. Now, I, I like uh, students to kind of look at a function and try and visualize what it would look like. Of course, r can't be negative. You can't have a negative radius. Of course, r can't go past 12. But let's look at the first term. The first term uh, goes up quadratically with r. Okay, and it's 12 pi r squared. The second term is negative, and it, it's a cubic term. But um, the first term has a 12 in front of it, and the second term uh, does not. So the first term must be increasing faster than the second term. Let's just look at the absolute value of the second term increases. But eventually, so let's look at both terms in their, as their absolute value. The first term is going to get bigger faster because of the 12 uh, than the second term. And <clears throat> eventually, however, the second term is going to exceed the first term. And once they become equal, it will go to 0. And that value, if you solve this equation, set it equal to 0, one of the roots would be 12, and another root would be uh, 0. Okay, and those are the important roots. So it uh, really varies from 0 to 0, but it increases as you go as r goes from 0 to 12. Now, you can solve this problem uh, using calculus because uh, if you looked at the, well, let's look at a graph of, of v first before we do that. All right, so I have the radius varying from minus 5 to oh, 20, I think it is. And uh, this is, I've calculated the volume using Excel. And this is how the volume changes. It goes up, it reaches a maximum, and then it goes down. And <clears throat> at the point when it reaches a maximum, that, the slope would be 0. And calculus is good for taking a function and finding the slope at any given point. So let's, let's just take a quick look at that. Students don't have, have to know how to do this if they're in, uh, in middle school or elementary school, but <clears throat> they, you might tell them that calculus is a way of, of getting a function and changing it to a new function that gives you the slope at every point. So the volume is 12 pi r squared minus pi r cubed. We take the derivative and we get 24 pi r minus 3 pi r squared, <clears throat> and the slope will be 0 at the maximum. So we set it equal to 0. We can cancel out the um, 3 and pi to get 8 minus r equals 0, and r equals 8 centimeters. So the, the maximum would be 8 centimeters. And of course, if r is 8, then h is, is 4, because the sum has to be 12. <clears throat> Now, it's interesting that r is greater than h. Not surprising if you think about it, because the volume increases uh, with the square of the radius, where it, it only increases linearly with the height. So it would favor a bigger radius than height. All right, let's go back to our graph. And uh, I think you can see that the maximum is at 8, all right, in our graph. 
Uh, another interesting thing is that the, the, the function goes up kind of quadratically in the beginning and it drops almost linearly at the end. As, as r increases, um, we, we can actually take this function and look at the two contributions, the 12 pi r squared. Let me just bring that function in. You can see that almost it's the beginning parts of this is almost completely determined by the 12 pi r squared. And then if we look at the absolute value of the second term, um, it, it increases more slowly <coughs> because, the, well, for one thing, r, r cubed increases more slowly than r squared between 0 and 1, for one thing. Let's, let's just change the limits of this and we'll see. Uh, let me go up to uh, 5,000. I think that might be enough. Well, let's go to 6,000. And you can see the two curves meet up. And of course, remember, it's 12 pi r squared minus pi r cubed. So they become equal, <coughs> and that's at 12, as you would expect. So this curve here is really the difference between the first term and the second term. And um, another thing to point out to students would be uh, that um, although the mathematical function is defined everywhere <clears throat> from minus infinity to plus infinity. The um, real physical values of R is from 0 to 12 and H from 0 to 12. And of course, the, the sum of those two can only be 12. So the, the, the problem only has real physical meaning between 0 and 12. That's another thing to bring out. So uh, we've uh, done a, a nice simple problem that I think uh, using tools like Excel can, can lead to a better understanding of what's going on. It's kind of an extension of some uh, geometry and volume uh, relationships that are uh, explored in, in uh, elementary and middle school. Um, uh, but you can you can go further by making it into an interesting problem. So I hope you enjoyed that problem and, and find it useful. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.